back, everyone. You're watching We Heart Therapy, the special series EFT Talk. I'm your host, Dr. Annabelle Bugatti, licensed marriage and family therapist and certified EFT supervisor and therapist here in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. I am so excited to welcome to our show today. We have a trainer with us all the way from Italy. His name is Dr. Andrea Pagani. He is uh, the founder of the EFT Center in Rome, and he is the co-founder of the Italian Center, the Italian community for EFT. And he's written a book for couples, and he'll talk about that at the end and has an app to go with it as well. And he's agreed to visit us all the way from Rome today to talk about attachment theory and attachment science. So thank you so much, Andrea, for being with us today. Thank you, Annabelle. It's a great pleasure. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you want to tell everyone how to say hello in Italian? Ciao, buongiorno. Uh -huh. Ciao, buongiorno. <laughs> <laughs> so exactly. We learned something new today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, to all of our uh, Italian. Buongiorno, buongiorno. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great. <laughs> so let's talk about attachment. And the reason why we're going to talk about this today, and, and I'm going to have Andrea give us um, some information about that, but. For therapists, um, a lot of, especially in the United States, and I know there are people in Europe and other countries watching this, but our master's programs don't do a good job at fully enveloping attachment, and they sort of give you a very thin slice of it. So a lot of people don't even realize that there's other parts to it that include emotion regulation and behavior. They think it's just about bonding. And we love to call it the science of love, and it is. Um, and so yeah. this is so important. And if you're just a regular person watching this, knowing about attachment and how attachment impacts all of us in our human behavior will help you change the way you see people and relationships. So that's why we're talking about it today. And it's good to have some refreshers if you are sort of familiar with attachment. So... Andrea, why don't you start us off and maybe share if maybe do you have like a little bit of history where attachment science used to be and where it is now? Yeah, yeah Annabelle, um, I must absolutely agree with you. It's uh, absolutely important that the attachment now in psychotherapy and uh, it's important because it help us to understand I, how we live and how our brain works and how our relation works. So the attachment has a long history that started in the past century. And uh, the most important researcher about this is uh, John Bowlby, that is an Englishman, a very serious Englishman. But uh, Bowlby in the last century uh, started, started from the the children, the study of the children and the study of the little mammals, uh, uh, study how the, is important the connection between the baby and the caregiver, particularly, obviously, the mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, the study um, uh, began with this, uh, um, with this project, understand how is important the bond between the caregiver and the little child can help the people to understand the world around and the world, the connection in the world. And this is very important this, in this situation. After John Bowlby, one of the most important studies about this uh, did from Mary Ainsworth that um, uh, she, she uh, built a great, uh, a great uh, experiment that uh, is very famous, this experiment in uh, psychology that called Strange Situation. Mm -hmm. And in this, um, in this uh, study, uh, um, how do children react to the removal of their mother? So about this, uh, she can uh, describe some strategy that uh, the children use to take the attention of the mother. And this is very important because uh, uh, begin to understand the different uh, way that we use, uh, and this is, a, is the second uh, process that the, 
the attachment story uh, develop that we use to uh, connect with the other adult or with the other people. So the very important um, step is that at the beginning of the past century and the half of the past century, Bobby and Maria's work work with the child. But after years, in the last 40, 30 years, um, the, the study and the, um, put the attention to the adult and we can also uh, see that because the, the same uh, strategy that the children use to uh, that characterize I don't know if characterize is a good <laughs> is a good word but uh, um, uh, desire the protest smile pleasure, touch, frustration, fear of abandon is the same characteristic that have the children and the adult. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, um, this is very important, this passage, because we see the, the same structure inside of the children and the adult. Um, uh, this is the little piece of story. And another, I, I want to say that another piece of the story is in EFT. As we, as we love, the, the model that we love, because Sue Johnson take this perspective and enlarge mm -hmm. to the relation and the, the relation of love and became and started the science of love from the children to the science of love. Yeah. <laughs> this is the long process that helped us to understand that, uh, how is so important the attachment yeah. because it's a, a theory of personality. Mm -hmm. Because that uh, is a theory of the human beings uh, and is also the explain in different way how we work uh, in the relation and also in the life. Um, I, or I know that it's very, I, I feel exciting when I, think, when I speak about <laughs> attachment theory because like therapies changed my uh, point of view in a, in a very big way. I am not very young, and when I started to study psychotherapy, I started to, sci to study psychoanalytic perspective and then behavioral perspective. But when I understand the power of attachment in this perspective, real changed the point of view, and it helped the uh, attachment theory, helped me to understand the uh, blind spot that I have in the therapy. And yeah. I say thank you to John Bowlby. That is, <laughs> I love his work. And I think that is a, the importance of John Bowlby in the science is like the importance of Darwin. Yeah. Because they turn the point of view of us about the man. Yeah. I don't know when, I don't know, what is your experience, Annabel? But and also when I started to do psychotherapy, like client, and I was 21, the the therapist helped me to be in an individual, a strength individual, and work with me to be independent. Yeah. And I many years I work with this <laughs> this perspective. And it, uh, after many years, I understand that is only a part. Of the, the of the street, right. the, and is a, is a yeah, what you're saying is so important too. And and so I'm going to go back and kind of uh, reflect and then come back to where you just ended. So you said so many wonderful things, and um, you know you're right. Before John Bowlby, and I believe he came along around the 1950s, 1960s. Before Bowlby, the main introduction to psychotherapy and science of the mind. You know, Freud is one of the most famous, you know, he's known as the father of psychoanalysis, but he's also the father of talk therapy. And, you know, he believed that people had these unconscious drives and we're all fueled by these aggressions and this uh, um, sexual <laughs> drives, you know, so we're driven by sex and aggression, basically. And Absolutely. You had Dr. Spock parenting that came after World War II, which was a completely different approach. It was not attachment. It was let your babies cry it out, you know, self-soothe, you know, don't coddle your baby, don't pick up your baby. 
And we didn't realize how damaging that was. And John Bowlby came along, and I believe he was a physician. And he actually studied children in orphanages and hospitals. And he noticed that a baby, so in the hospitals also, children were abandoned quite often in the hospitals. And so he noticed that babies that were not touched and were not interacted with would actually regress in their physical development, that they, like their hands started like making very bizarre movements and the children would rock themselves and some of them even died. So yeah. that's how Bulby started to introduce the fact that hmm, maybe there's something to attachment that touch and connection is actually vital for our survival. And he was right. And so he, you know, even Bulby from the beginning said attachment is from cradle to grave, but his research focused mainly on childhood attachment between children and parents. And, you know, as you so lovely put, Andrea, after Bowlby came, oh, and, and Bowlby wrote a really good book, actually, his son published it posthumously. Um, it's called The Making and Breaking of Affectional Bonds. And it is a short, easy read, and it's fabulous if you're interested in attachment. You can buy it on Amazon. But after Bowlby came Mary Main, who studied the interaction between children and strangers and children and their caregivers um, with an experiment called the strange situation. And you can look up videos on that in you on YouTube and you can find out more about the strange situation. And, and Mary Main helped develop our idea or sorry, Mary Ainsworth, sorry. Yeah, Mary Ainsworth. Ainsworth. <laughs> yeah. Mary Main did the adult attachment interview. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mary Ainsworth did taught us about attachment styles. Mary Ainsworth did the strange situation. I'm sorry for that correction there. So Mary Ainsworth um, was the one who conducted these studies and she developed these three attachment styles, as you said. Um, well, we noticed there are anxious children and uh, the anxious attachment style, which is where you might get really nervous when your caregiver leaves and might get really upset, might try to cling or, or hold on tighter. Um, and then the avoidant attachment is the one who just kind of goes away like, I don't care that you're gone, I don't notice, like I don't need you kind of thing. And I'm not sure if this came from Mary Ainsworth, I need to do a little more research, but I know we did develop disorganized attachment, which is for people who have experienced trauma where they're not able to make sense of the attachment regulators are, are just so disorganized inside because they might have had abuse by somebody, a caregiver who should have been safe, right? So attachment is hardwired into us and our caregiver is supposed to be safe. So you have, you start building that map, but then when they're committing this trauma to you, then you don't know how to trust but you long for that connection because that's how we're wired. And so it's just kind of, you know, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah because uh, we structure inside of us internal working model that are the way that allow us to, to uh, predict the behavior of the other. So we, in this uh, very, in this, uh, in this primary um, uh, bond, we understand how we must behave in that circumstance. The perspective of attachment theory is always an um, ethological perspective. The main concept uh, is that we are uh, social beings. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, this is very important because uh, you, speak, uh, you spoke before about uh, Freud, and uh, before uh, Freud was clear, was a genius because uh, understand an incre incredible perspective inside of us. But important of social beings uh, change our uh, perspective in the clinical because we can work now in with couple, with family, with individual, always about this perspective. 
Yes. And this is this is the the uh, the, um, the change of of uh, work of attachment. And yeah. I won't say it's, uh, only another thing about your wonderful story about Bowlby. You explained very clear. And I think that in the fifty of the past century, understand now now I think that is natural for us understand that when a baby cry at the first needs <laughs> the caregiver there is no 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 doubt about but in the 50s this is not this is not right it's not clear this and and in the anglo-saxon um society this is much more <laughs> not clear and yeah. he has a great in intuition and uh, this change the the role of the relation mother and child, and that and now change the role of the psychotherapy because you know the main focus i think now there are there are 1000 of model 1500 i don't know today i don't know because it's possible that yesterday <laughs> something changed again <laughs> i don't know but you know that I think that the totally of the uh, perspective at the first point uh, there is uh, alliance, alliance, secure alliance, and for we that use EFT, secure base that is the concept of uh, John Bowlby. Give a secure base when I have a secure base, I can explore the world. Yeah, you're saying this idea of the secure base, and in psychotherapy that's pivotal because we need to create that secure base with our clients and the secure base idea you're saying is from attachment right this is what Bowlby came up with and this was part of Mary Ainsworth work is noticing you know how that attachment develops between an infant and caregiver because they are the first human beings that we have a relationship with so they are literally the blueprint for the relationship we have for the rest of our, our life in the world. So what you mentioned, Andrea, um, internal working models, and, and not everyone knows what that means. So um, basically, attachment impacts how we see others and how we see ourselves. And that internal working model is just sort of like a mental image of that includes our self-esteem and our trust towards others. So this is affected by attachment. It is, it is made by attachment because when you're a baby, you know, um, the crying, those instincts. And, and if you've ever been a mother, you know that different cries mean different things. And these are all a function of keep, because a baby is totally dependent on the caregiver. They need that connection. And the more in tune the mother is, the easier it is for her to pick up on those signals and they work together to coordinate the needs of the infant. And this isn't just a childhood thing. We found that the same process happens in adults, which we'll, we'll go to in a little bit. But so if we reach, if we need a parent and they aren't there, um, like never there, neglect, or they just you know turn away, then a child can learn that others cannot be depended on, they cannot be trusted to be there for you. And these people may develop an avoidant attachment style. And, or if you're a parent, I think one of the even harder things is inconsistent caregiving, which is like intermittent. Sometimes the parent responds, sometimes they don't. But like the baby, the person um, isn't able to um, make sense of when the parent will be around or when they don't. Um, they, they can't figure that out. So they're stuck trying to come up with all these ways to get their signal to their caregiver to receive care. And so these people may find, have to find elaborate strategies mm -hmm. to get their care. And, you know, if they're worried that their parent will go away, then these people could, so really avoidant and anxious goes down to how do you deal with a, a caregiver when they go away, right? Both of them sense an, an absent caregiver or an inconsistent caregiver, but the avoidant says, well, if I can't get it, I'm just going to turn it off and not need it because it's worse to need it and not have it. So I'll just learn to survive without it. 
versus anxious says, I know I want this, but I can't figure out when it's going to go away. So I'm going to fight for it and try everything I can to hang on to it. And so they may become really anxious. Um, society kind of pathologizes these people as clingy or needy. Oh. And yet it's so normal and natural for us to need each other. And we have, thanks to Sue Johnson, we'll talk about her work. We know that there's brain science, <laughs> right, around this that attachment is not just, you know, they used to think, yeah, this is something we, we observed from the outside. We now know from the inside in our bodies that neurologically, physiologically, biologically, attachment is actually wired into the survival parts of our brain. So when you're calling someone needy, like if they're hungry, are, they, are you going to tell them like, no, you shouldn't need food. You're, you're just too needy because you need food. No, you're going to say, go get food, <laughs> right? <laughs> if someone needs connection, oh, you're just being needy, right? That's so awful to do to people. But people that don't have that secure base, that's that trust in their caregiver that when I signal to the person I need, the person I love and depend on, if I can trust that they will show up for me and respond when I need them, when I'm in distress, then I will build what is known as secure attachment. But anyone who didn't have that may have one of the other styles, right? So this secure base is a hallmark of EFT. Andrea mentioned EFT. This is emotionally focused therapy. That's the model of counseling that we Absolutely. Practice. And Andrea is a trainer for EFT in Rome. And EFT is all about attachment theory. And we've learned to harness the power of attachment to help people. And again, attachment is how we make sense of the world, right? Can I, you see these people as adults, right? Andrea, like people who think someone has an agenda or they're kind of jaded, like, I don't want to be around people. They're all bad. They're all bad news. That's somebody who has an avoidant attachment style, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And when you uh, look, like all the studies that show about like criminal behavior, psychopathology, uh, all has its roots in attachment. It is textbook. When you go back and look at their roots, there is broken attachment, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. attachment don't typically develop criminal behavior. <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. No, 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 no. The unsecure attachment, sure, sometimes can show some some difficult like some kind of depression or some kind of anxiety uh, or, or uh, this typical way also uh, you see a very important very important things this is a, a, a strategy this is a strategy to survive our life for the first three years of our life we depend from the uh, our caregiver this is clear and sometimes our caregiver can have some problems because uh, <laughs> the, the life is not easy. Doesn't mean and, your parents were terrible people, and, and maybe in some cases they were. <laughs> but you know, yeah. people when they hear like, "Oh, I have like an avoidant attachment style or anxious attachment style," they feel like, "Is this a sense of judgment?" No, we're not here to say that your parents were terrible people. You know, I love what you're saying. Is sometimes our caregivers have their own stuff going on. And I think too, what's important, Andre, is that our parents were also brought up during a different time when they again had Dr. Spock, tough love, they didn't know attachment. So these, they're just repeating what was taught to them. And they just didn't get the memo how much that can actually harm people and it just impact our relationships going forward. So, oh, and you, the, oh, also I just wanna come back to you on the internal working models, our view of self, when we can't make sense of why our caregiver is going away, we tend to turn it on the inside and say it must be us, right? Like I'm not a good little girl, or I'm not a good little boy, or I'm not loved, or you know, I'm not lovable, I'm a bad kid. And so we, this is, the development of your self-esteem right when you get that responsiveness it it sends signals about who you are through the eyes of others and so this is what impacts you can never take off the lens of attachment 
This is literally how we see the world. And we are never not in relationship. If you think about it, those relationships may vary. Like maybe if you're in a business, your relationship may be defined by customer and business owner, or it could be brother, sister, um, parent, child, friendship, um, supervisor, mentor, mentee, uh, romantic relationships. So we're never not in those relationships. So having a secure base is so essential for all relationships, no matter how intimate or um, casual they may be. And absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, this is true. Is a is the 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 prospective attachment is much more large mm -hmm. than we thought in the past. Right. And so before we get like we're going to get up to adult attachment, but I want to also what we've learned. So Andrea, let's jump in here and help them help everyone know too that this is where we talk about. So when Bowlby saw that children's development regressed, you know, we also observed emotional structures in people in relationship to attachment. And thanks to the, uh, a research of Sue Johnson and some of the neurological uh, studies done by Jim Cohn. And we know that, uh, that attachment is wired into our survival instincts. And that when that our brain, even if it just perceives, all it has to do is perceive, right? Um, let alone experience. But if it just perceives that there's a threat to your relationship, or that you're not being accepted by another person, the, your brain actually neurologically encodes that as a danger cue and it arouses your nervous system. Your nervous system puts you into fight or, fight or flight responses to again rally your body to survive because attachment is literally survival. It, so we are all hardwired to hang on to our relationships and to avoid rejection and we know the pain center of the brain lights up, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah. emotions are like your body's threat detection system. So we know that when somebody starts to show an emotion, we call it dysregulated, right? That when we have secure attachment, we have better control over regulating emotion. But when we don't have secure attachment, we lose the ability to control our emotions. And this is what Mary Ainsworth was studying and Bowlby noticed was how emotion is actually regulated by attachment. You wanna talk some more about that, Andrea? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the, the one point of the theory is that concern, uh, concerns emotion and the regulation of the emotion. And in particular, uh, we understand the meaning of fear in nature. Because uh, it's clear, the fear is an emotion very important for us because in natural we are prey. Yeah, I think that so. If we are lonely, like mammals, we are lonely, we are really in danger. And, and so we can uh, have one strategy to have a, a, a link with the other. We don't last alone. So the fear is not only um, in an attachment perspective, attachment is the fear of the anxiety for something that happened in the moment, but is an ex existential fear. So we work with this kind of the fear of ab uh, abandon. And so we work with this perspective and uh, we can understand that all the behavior and all the emotion inside, the emotion of fear is very, very, very important to survive. It's a, one of the first strategies for us. So That's so well, Andrea. Oh my gosh, I just want to highlight what you just said. Beautiful. You said that fear is so important. It's an existential danger. And that's what we deal with because... Again, losing attachment, losing connection, abandonment, fear of abandonment goes against our survival instincts. So beautifully said. And so emotions are that, you know, fear is part of that. Anger, sadness, even joy. Joy and happiness are the positive sides of secure, loving bonds. 
Um, but also you talk about strategies, right? So do you want to tell people what, so strategies has another, we call it something else, behavior, right? Yeah, behavior, behavior. This is where they all come together, right? Where it's like, I call it the golden trifecta, right? So it's <laughs> attachment, how we make sense of the world. Do we view others as safe or trustworthy? Do we view ourselves as capable, lovable, worthy? And if we sense neither of those, then we have our brain, that threat detection system lights up in our body. We only have finite set of ways, right, Andrea? Fight, flight, or freeze. And these translate into behavior, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, the motion, you know, the motion is the music, okay? It's the music of the dance. Uh, there is a metaphor that we use in EFT. And... Uh, and the motion, like each dance, there are behavior because there are steps. Yeah. So the, um, uh, this is another very important point that uh, uh, many studies uh, understand that each emotion have an action tendency that bring us to have some specific behavior. So we can understand much more better what happen in the brain, what happened in the, because we can see the body, the body arousal, we say, we, we, we often, we speak about triggers that start to have a uh, meaning perception, and then the meaning perception as a, a little uh, body arousal inside of us, we can help the client to understand what happened inside, so we can build an, uh, uh, and a perspective that helps us to understand what happened inside of the people. And uh, this is a great uh, process that helps us to um, transform an, uh, body arousal and, and, uh, in a sig significant uh, psychological perspective. Because the motion, you know, we are in the, uh, in the in, um, age that uh, love the rational brain, okay? We are in the Russian moment in the, uh, the last century. Uh, the, the rational brain was the much important the, and the motion is not, as you said before, is not um, very important. But really the motion is a cognitive uh, uh, machine inside our brain that help us to um, understand the, the world outside of, outside of us. Yeah. So we, across this perspective, and uh, the motion, the body, the means, are a great uh, uh, structure that we can uh, use a singular moment. We can distill every, everything of this, and we understand much better the sense that there are inside of the people and help us to uh, see the core, the core of the moment in uh, uh, here now, that uh, the core of the moment that we feel here now, and this is a we can say also is a strategy, but it really is a, a connection, a really connection between all these points, and yeah. this is very helpful for, for a therapist mm -hmm. because uh, he can ask to the people, oh, what are what now you feel in your body? Oh, what started when you change your face? What thought you uh, arrived to you? Oh, and what what? What do you think that the other people uh, want uh, uh, thought <laughs> think in that moment? Sorry. So we uh, we can use this uh, this uh, different map, this different little piece of us to understand the process inside the people. Can we can help to you in uh, individual or in couple or in family to stop the terrible negative cycle that inside of us help us to work inside of us to say, ah, you are, I am not good, I am not, I am not lovely people, I am wrong, he, don't, he doesn't want me, I am not right, I am, there is something of mistake in, in me, and we can help uh, the people to stop this yeah. dramatical negative cycle that sometimes cr uh, uh, help us to crash <laughs> our mind. You're saying, you said something so good. You said, you know, because emotion impacts what we do, right? We call these strategies to remedy the danger that our brain is lighting off, right? And emotions, 
they're just information signals, right? They don't have to be good or bad. They're just information signals that, that give you clues about your experience in the world. And you're saying, you let us know, Andrea, that this starts in the body because everything that's happening to us emotionally is happening to us physiologically, right? Because the brain yeah. has to get that danger signal first that tells you, uh-oh, danger's afoot, and then your emotion comes up. And all emotion has a behavior attached to it. This is so important, what you said, Andrea, because, and, and the fact that previous society was all about the logical mind, rational mind, you know, and you see this pop up where people try to turn off the emotion, everybody stay calm, and they try to talk people out of feeling bad or feeling scared. And we found that that's not an effective strategy. And there's actually a neurological reason for that. Because when your limbic system turns on the nervous system, remember attachment is hardwired into the survival instinct, but rational thought is a higher function. When your limbic system fires off a danger cue, that part of your brain, the prefrontal cortex, actually gets flooded with peptides and shuts down because yeah. it's trying to, to divert energy towards your survival. This is not something you can turn off. It's not something you can stop. People try, and there is a behavior attached to that. So if you're in a relationship, this will be someone's like, let's just be calm, like everyone be calm. We can talk about this when we're calm. They may shut down or go away. I've just got to get, you know, calmer. I can't be here with all this logical emotion or, you know, and emotion is logical, but they're like, I can't be here while this emotion is going out of control. That is somebody in EFT. We know these are people who tend to withdraw. So we have pursuers and withdrawers. And usually these can be associated with the fight or flight responses of pursuer usually their body fires up and says, I got to move towards and, and hang on to prevent from losing you. And the withdrawer says, I got to go, you know, take care of myself first before I can make sense, before I can make sense of this. Whereas the pursuing person says, I can't make sense of this until I make sure we're okay. So they just prioritize the order differently. But, you know, when people, they try hard to push down the emotion and not feel it, and we know when um, you have um, difficult emotions like stress or hurt, um, the body actually encodes that exactly the same as if you were being stabbed. And it actually releases stress hormones into your body, adrenaline, cortisol. And without secure attachment, um, and an emotion demands to move out. It actually comes from the Latin word immovere, to move out. And so we don't get that ability to move out by expression with a safe other to get that connection. That adrenaline, that cortisol stays in our body and it starts eating our organs, right? And then our body has to divert more energy to healing itself. And, you know, our quality of life starts to go down because now we have all these, our, our organs are being eaten up by the adrenaline and cortisol. And... We can't, um, you know, we start getting sicker more often. We don't bounce back as often. So like having secure attachment is actually literally good for you. When you get attachment, right, the brain, the brain chemistry changes. Your brain can start to release oxytocin and serotonin and dopamine. And all of these become pain blockers to the cortisol and the adrenaline. And they stop the flow of adrenaline. So it's not that you can't do things on your own. It's just, we weren't designed biologically to bear that kind of stress by ourselves. So why stress your heart out if you don't need to, but you know, people that shut that down, you know, again, that has a behavior. And when they stop being able to do that more and more on their own by going away or trying to distract themselves with the task, then you see people start to use external things like um, alcohol, addiction, drugs, these kinds of things can mimic um, the same chemicals that you might get with attachment, but they're not as long lasting, right? And you have to keep going. You only feel better as long as that you're under the influence, right? And yeah, then you yeah, yeah. Off, you're back to feeling like crap again, right? Yeah. 
So it's not uh, a long term strategy. And so, you know, you're yes. in a relationship. You say very good. You say when our brain is in danger, in danger modality, the amygdala inside of our brain starts to work. And in this moment, we can understand nothing. Rational brain doesn't work, it's finished. And only the fear is inside, as, as we say before. The fear starts to work, and the production inside of our body is full of substance that help us to defend, to stay, stop, to, I don't, I don't feel, to, that say to the brain, I don't feel anything, I don't feel, <laughs> don't see that, don't show that you have fear, don't show that you have fear. And this is a terrible moment. This is a terrible moment. And you say, this is very, uh, you need a great number of energy to, <laughs> to keep this kind of, of, uh, yes. uh, of situation. It's, oh, you it's, know, it's, it's a drama. It's a drama. Shut down their emotions, like actually very tired a lot. And they don't realize how exhausting, how hard they're working to push all that down. You know? and, and it's not to say that, that um, there aren't survival situations where, you know, you need to be able to, it's not appropriate where, you know, bursting out into crying because there's somebody who's going to shoot you, you know, obviously that, that wouldn't be a good survival situation. So it has its places, but, you know, attachment is survival and, and attachment is also how you thrive. And so couples and individuals come into therapy because they're stuck in survival mode and they want to get to thriving and shutting yeah. down emotions, right? Again, emotions are just information signals. So Absolutely. we've got to lean into the emotion and understand what it's trying to tell you about your experience so we can get the information to make a better decision as to how you want to behave with it, right? So we yeah. don't know how to do this. We don't know how to get control. And when we see we're out of control, then we try to do things that, that try to put us in control, like push it down. But then we also end up pushing away others and pushing away good experiences because you can't choose which one you numb out. It's like you numb one, you numb all. And then for these people, it's really sad. And Andrea, you probably hear this in your sessions. Like some people end up defining good as just the absence of bad. And that's actually a very narrow way of defining bad things. But it's because they've limited their range of motion in emotion, right? If I block out emotions because I don't want to feel pain, then I also don't allow myself to deeply feel joy, happiness, passion, all these things that you can get for free, right? Without <laughs> chemicals, right? They're natural chemicals. And those are what people are trying to induce when they chase euphoria, um, inducing drugs or adrenaline evoking experiences because they don't know how to get this on their own through attachment and connection. So people get themselves into trouble more people get into trouble trying to not feel their emotions than feel them. But, you know, feeling them, but also not paying attention to them to where it's like emotional, like vomit everywhere also doesn't work, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So now this brings us up to adult attachment, Andre, as you said, after Bulby and Mary Ainsworth, we had um, Shaver and Cassidy, um, Phil Shaver in, I think the 90s, 80s and 90s, I think it was 1987, they started to understand romantic love. They expanded adult uh, attachment science to include romantic love because when we grow up, our attachment bond shifts to include more, more attachment figures, but it also a romantic partner become, often becomes an attachment figure for us as adults. And so you had Phil Shaver and then Sue Johnson comes along. And both of them have done a lot of work on attachment and attachment science. And we, we know it's not just a theory because we've had the neurological brain science to go with it. We've been able to prove the existence of attachment in the brain. All these things that we've talked are thanks to neuro neurological science. The work of Jim Cohn, he's a great um, researcher and a lot of studies on attachment and social relationships. And so, Andrea, why don't you tell us a little bit of what we've learned about adult attachment? 
Well, we we understand. I when I speak about this in this uh, situation, I suggest to everybody to see a uh, wonderful video of Sue Johnson about uh, I don't remember the name in English. Um, Trefnet Brain is a, the, the the name of the video. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful experiment that uh, helps us to understand how the end of love mm -hmm. in the other end help the people to calm the brain in in, in situation of danger because there is a woman that take i don't remember the name of the of the machine in english oh, the MRI machine. So, thank you very much <laughs> and the, okay thank you and there, there is a woman that uh, this this kind of uh, analysis and there is the there are some steps in, the, in this experiment but the most important moment is when the hand of the husband keep the hand of the woman and inside the brain we can see the change the light of the change uh, the light of the brain change completely and we now understand how love works and uh, and this is the i think that this is the the great step that we now do in the psychotherapy we now use the we can use this perspective of the of the bonding like the main powerful strategy to help the people to to be much better bit my feel my, much more safe and um, because uh, if we have the people to have, this is another point very important of attachment we can change the way as we have the uh, 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 like right. our attachment attachment works, we can change this because right. we can have uh, experience emotional uh, corrective ex emotional experience that can change inside of us our model of work, and this is very important. And uh, when we uh, work with uh, um, um, secret attachment, the people can use emotion as the key to communication and grow in the life. And this is very important. I can think that is the, the fit, an important point because uh, sometimes uh, somebody asked to me, but what is the, the end of the psychotherapy? Oh, the end of the psychotherapy is when we have, is when we know how our emotion and we can use it to have, uh, to explore the world and use this like a key to um, uh, have an uh, inter interconnection. I don't know if interconnection is <laughs> with the others. That's important too, and I think that's one, you know, while you're saying that, I want to land here and make this point really important too. I think you also said this before, as we used to say, be independent, be independent. We didn't yeah. realize that the concept of the secure base, safe haven, shows us that dependence and independence are two sides of the same coin, right? So we're looking for healthy interdependence, which is what we're wired for. That's what attachment and connection is all about, is healthy interdependence not codependence, which is not a healthy type of interdependence, not avoidance, where it's like a obsessive independence where I can't even let other people in, I can't be vulnerable or emotional or rely on other people even when I need to, that's also not healthy, right? So the more secure you feel as a person, the more you are able to explore the world and yourself in the world, because you're not looking for danger, your sense is that Yes, there is danger out there, but I feel equipped to handle it. I know that I have my caregiver, that if I get into distress, a time of need, I have my person there. This is insecure attachment. I have my person there who's going to show up for me. And so I can go and try new things. And because I've developed secure attachment, I see myself as capable. So I can try new tasks, take adventures, maybe take risks in business to go for the job that... You know, maybe I didn't have as much training, but I know I have the skills, whatever. Like you'll take more risks and you're willing to try new things versus insecure attachment can really hold you back and doesn't create that healthy sense. And what you're saying is we used to think that uh, attachment strategies were sort of fixed in time. And now we know that they are, they can be shaped. So, you know, you, you might have grown up with secure attachment, but maybe you had some trauma happen and there were, wasn't anybody available for you 
or you had were betrayed by an attachment figure later in life. And there are key moments during your life where that, that really redefined that attachment bond and your strategies. And so when people come to us, that's what we're trying to do is reshape their strategies using the attachment science, knowing about the power of connection to help us regulate emotions. That's what you're saying. So Sue Johnson, she is the founder of Emotionally Focused Therapy, and she wrote a really good book called Love Sense, S-E-N-C-E. Oh, 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 wow. I cry and I see. Yeah. When I, <laughs> love Sense. <laughs> it's, it's a All the very important. And Sue did um, an experiment, which she talks about in the book, um, basically that people went in, volunteered to go into an fMRI machine, were told they were going to get shocked. If they were in distress, you know, we saw how the brain was lighting up. And, you know, if their relationship was in, in distress, if they had broken attachment, then having their caregiver did not help them feel better. But when they went through EFT and we reshaped the bond and helped them have secure, healthy bonding, then they noticed that when their caregiver touched their brain, even though they sensed, they got the signal that said, you're gonna be shocked, that their brain um, did not respond danger quite to the same alarm bells as insecure attachment and the pain center, um, the pain was perceived less. And this is something that's been also researched by others, um, Jim Cohen um, with the hand-holding study, um, I forget, somebody else did the perception of if you were climbing a mountain by yourself versus climbing it with a friend, and the perception was with a friend, the pack was suddenly lighter and the hill wasn't as steeper. So we are designed to expect connection, and when we don't get it, it, it violates our, our survival code on the inside, and emotions give us that cue. And you know, even if you're in business, you know, a lot of people think, oh, attachment's just for lovers. No, you're never not in relationships. So when you understand that emotions are the key, right, they're the information that tell you about a person's experience and the way they make meaning about a situation has to do with attachment, right? Do you see me as competent, capable? Can I trust you? Um, do we have a good connection, even if it is a boss, an employee, or do you just see me as a mess up, or, you know, all these things that happen when you can lean in and understand, then you can go towards the core of their experience and reshape that and communicate more explicitly about it, which is where everyone tries, you know, doesn't include that in their communication. So we help people with this emotional communication to restructure their bond. And like Andrea said earlier, you literally can't talk somebody out of their emotional experience because the nervous system is far more compelling to your body to, to survival than your rational brain, because that's a higher functioning feature. Now, the key is too, once we've been able to restore that connection, once we've been able to soothe, so uh, yeah, you said soothing the threatened brain, I think is the name of Sue's video. So if you guys look it up on YouTube, Sue Johnson, soothing the threatened brain. When you come towards a threatened brain as with attachment and secure connection, then it soothes the brain, the body, the nervous system can relax, you get out of fight or flight mode, and then your rational brain can come back online, and then you can problem solve. So not doing emotion really does not serve us. <laughs> so this is why understanding attachment and emotion and how that impacts behavior is so important and will and hopefully this will help you see yourself differently it will help you understand the people around you differently when somebody gets angry when they get really reactive that's a sign that their brain has experienced danger right so andrea tell us a little bit more about just quickly eft and couples therapy you know, when couples come in or even individuals, right? Because it's not just for couples, it's families and individuals as well. How do we, so what's the goal of our therapy together? Oh, well, the goal is absolutely uh, uh, understand the negative cycle that uh, is inside of us when we speak about uh, individual therapy or the cycle that is in between the people 
in the couple therapy or in the family therapy. Uh, the work is always between and inside, and we work always in this, in this way because we can understand much better what inside we think and what, uh, what is our emotion and what is our behavior. And what we. And that's the cycle you're talking about, is that absolutely. pattern. Oh, uh, uh, Annabelle, I speak very, 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 very way because. You're great. You're great. I don't know that we, we, we have not much time. Attachment is a very large uh, yes. um, uh, topic. And um, also, I think that uh, every time we, we have much more research that uh, study some kind of particular people, the people with great trauma, very big trauma, or, or the people that uh, are, um, did, uh, did, uh, did war, war um, did the uh, war. Uh, I know that there are many studies about this or anxiety and much more. But the focus is that we help the people to have a clear, uh, um, and a clear moment of our emotion. And we now can use the therapy help the people to use their emotion to understand himself and the others. So they can have a an, uh, an, uh, much more better grow in, in their life. This is a... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you said that so beautifully. So we work within ourselves and in between. So how we interact with others and we understand our, our cycle, we call it a cycle in EFT, it's really just the pattern and it's quite predictable because as we said, there's only a finite set of ways to respond, fight, flight or freeze, even though those behaviors attached might be nuanced to personality and, and style. But um, so we're really just helping to map and make clear what happens, um, everything that goes into that ingredient with how we make attachment sense in the world, what our emotional signals are, what our behaviors are, and we start to organize it, make sense of it, and then help each other shape it, whether it's an individual or a couple or family. And you're saying we use emotion as a key indicator to go inside is to help us understand more about our experience in the world. And we make sense of that. So this is so beautiful. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I, I, I often use this image and it, it, about attachment, you no. Know? I think of people that want an apple on the on the tree, mm -hmm. and there is another people that if keep the the steps to reach the 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 apple that is much more far. Uh, the people that take the apple, I don't know, feel much more secure if is alone. And we I, and I speak about this because. Uh, Attachment theory is human being, is like we work, is, is natural. Mm -hmm. And this, it's, it's not a very intellectual situation, it's natural. We live in this way, and it's our strategy like human being to be in the world, to be, to be more safety in this very dangerous world, you, you know, <laughs> this age is very dangerous from many, many perspectives, and... Uh, have a secure bond, have a connection with the other is a, absolutely the, the most important strategy for us to be, to feel us safe and to explore the world. Yes, our surest way of survival is attachment yeah. connection with others. And you, you articulated that so beautifully, Andrea, and thank you so much. Now you've written a book for couples. Can you tell everyone, I know it's in Italian, but can you tell everyone what that name is so in case they do speak or read Italian, they can look it up and, and get that book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had this book in Italian that calls in Italian La Casa della Coppia. That is the name, that is the, in English as the house of couple because an institute that I uh, built in Italy and some years ago and help the couple in uh, difficulty. And so I think that this, the, the name, the house of couple is a, is a nice name for Phil Seif, the, the couple. <laughs> That's amazing. So uh, the house of the couple, it is in Italian, but you can look that up. And Andrea, if you'll email me a link uh, to your book, I can put it in the description for this video on YouTube. If you guys yeah. are watching or listening to this on a podcast or you'll just have to rewind and re-listen to it or google andrea and um 
Andrea, what is your website so that people can find you if they want to find you? Uh, now we, I, you can see in uh, eftromacenter.com. Dot com, eftromacenter.com. Yeah, and okay. this is one website, and the other website is uh, italiacommunity.com. Uh, Perfect. And you guys can always Google Andrea Pagani, Italy, EFT, and he'll come up. And um, I'm sure links to his book will come up. But I, if you're watching this on YouTube, I will make sure I put links to this. And so thank you again so much, Andrea, for being with us today. We just so appreciate your wisdom and, and sharing us with your heart. Thank you, Annabelle. It's, it was a great, great pleasure for me to speak with you. And uh... Uh, I, and thank you for uh, speaking about this uh, great topic and that I love. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And guys, you know, if, you're, if you are tuning in, I do have a book coming out as well at uh, the end of this year. It's coming out with, by Rutledge is the publisher, and it's called Using Relentless Empathy in the Therapeutic Relationship connecting with challenging and resistant clients. So um, hopefully you guys will keep an eye out for that and uh, that you'll get some use out of that. But uh, thank you again so much. Thank you, Andrea. Guys, make sure that you look him up, that you buy his book for couples and make sure that you guys hit subscribe because more videos are on the way. Don't forget to buy my book. Using Relentless Empathy in the Therapeutic Relationship, Connecting with Challenging and Resistant Clients, for Helping Professionals, available on Amazon or on my website, www.drbugatti.com.